Welcome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm Miriam, and this is More Than Organized Monday. And today I want to talk to you about keeping just the best versions of things, especially information. So one of the fastest ways that clutter piles up is by having multiple versions of things. Um, so here's a few ways to look at it a little bit differently um, and looking at why you might not want to keep multiple versions of things. So if you start by thinking about things that you do have that you love, that you consider precious, that are supremely valuable to you, you tend to know where those are located. Your children, your partner, your pets, grandma's pearls, you know, what, what are the important things to you? And usually we can find those things. But what about scissors? Do you know where your scissors are? Do you know where the paring knife is? Do you know how handy a pen is for you? When we have multiples of things, um, maybe socks. How do you find your favorite pair of socks when there's so many socks? Um, when we have multiples, you have to look through those multiples to find your favorites instead of just having your favorites and using that. So that's one way to look at it. How can you flip it around so having more doesn't make it easier, it actually makes it harder. Think about that. And then when it comes to paper and computer information, turns out that we tend to keep information that we already know um, because it proves what we're talking about, that we know what we're talking about, that we're interested in that topic. And so, by keeping multiple versions of things, every time you run across an article or a post or an email about the thing you're interested in, our first tendency is, oh, I like that, I'll keep it. Instead of, is this the best version of this information? Or let me look at it from a little bit of a distance and say, is that how I tend to think about this topic? Is this an agreement? Does this add more depth? and um, nuance to the process? Is it something I didn't know that I need to incorporate in my entire concept library of this information? Um, and so instead of keeping multiple versions of the information that tend to be stated just slightly differently, we're only keeping new information about that topic if it's different and enhances the information we already know. Um, the beauty of this is it can start you working forward and backwards at the same time on the information you're choosing to keep. So what I mean by that is from here forward, every time you glance at some new piece of information on a certain topic, you can actually ask yourself, is this the best version of this information? Is this the most succinct? Is it the easiest to find and relate to? Is it approached? by um, a trusted source. Um, and so just think, is this the best version I know of? And then you might ask yourself, is this how I think about this concept? Or is it adding or enhancing the flavor of this topic? Um, and is it something I need to ponder for a little while and then revisit again in a few weeks as it settles in? There can be a little bit of a temporariness to some of it but it helps you bringing too much information that's just a prettier version in a different font from a different source that says the exact same thing of the information you already have on hand. So by all means, pick your favorite versions of it, the best version. Um, but also, because you're doing it moving forward with anything new that's coming in, you can also look at your past information and start looking for the best version of that. Um, compare and contrast, consolidating the notes about a topic. Sometimes there's one line out of an article that you would like to add to a different article so that you have all the information handy. Just do that. You don't have to keep both full articles. So um, again, we're weeding out, we're doing learning discernment and making decisions about what's the best way to look at this topic. Um, I will give you the example of my spaghetti sauce recipe. When I was a kid, my mom had the Better Homes and Gardens uh, cookbook, the red gingham one that everybody had. Um, but they, with every new edition of that, they 
uh, updated and changed the recipes a little bit. And the version we had was fantastic starting point. And there were a few things that friends of my mom's had added and suggested to adapt the recipe over the years. And it was very well suited to our family and our family's tastes. And so I loved that recipe. And then somewhere along the line, that cookbook went away and I never grabbed the recipe. So I spent the next like 10 years trying to find that exact version edition of that particular cookbook and I couldn't find it or I couldn't find it or it would be, you know, kind of a pricey item from the secondhand store and when I would go back for it, it'd be gone and it was just kind of a hunt and and uh, search for for that particular recipe. In the meantime, I'm checking out other recipes, seeing if I like them, I'm clipping them, I'm practicing with some of them. None of them are hitting the mark. And then, ah, oh, Better Homes and Gardens put all of their different editions online. So I was able to actually find the recipe again, but it didn't have all the adjustments. And it actually had a few items that I didn't recall being in it. And so I just printed out that copy of the recipe and then I started taking notes from all the other things that I had learned over the years of cooking. And now it's pretty darn close to the actual recipe I recall from my childhood. So it's my best version of spaghetti sauce for me. And all the other spaghetti sauce recipes that I had cut and clipped and um, tried out that weren't the spaghetti sauce I loved went away. I didn't need another spaghetti sauce. So that's one way of thinking about it. Um, yeah, include notes and dots and color coding and arrows and things you need to have the best version of the information you need as your reference when you're keeping paper. Not just because it proves you are interested and interesting in that topic, um, because that's an in internal situation. Nobody else cares what information you keep in the background. If you know your stuff, you probably already integrated it into your brain and your process of communicating and don't need the paper as reference anymore. All right, hopefully that'll help cut back on the paper clutter and shows you a little bit of how you might apply it to household items as well. So I will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, comment, and tell all your friends because joining us each and every week on Monday for More Than Organized Monday is just more fun when there's more of us. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.